Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new PMR30 400 series stainless steel feed ramp. We finally did it and the enhanced mag release. These two go really well together to improve feeding operations. So a lot of you guys with the PMR30 know how these things can be plagued with failure to feed issues, just cycling issues in general. So really love this platform. And what we struck out to do was to improve it all the way around on a functional standpoint. So really excited about it. You guys have been requesting the stainless steel feed ramp for feels like over a year now. So finally, we've got it. It took a while. It was definitely difficult, way harder than the Sub 2000 stainless steel feed ramp. So really stoked about this. Can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. Got a full on installation video, did some before and after testing. So I hope you guys find it useful and helpful. Really looking forward to your feedback. Let's get on our tabletop, show you, put this baby in. Tools needed for this build, hammer, bench block, 1 8 inch punch, 3 32 inch punch, 1 16 inch punch, two and a half millimeter Allen key or T handle like we got here, but you don't necessarily need that two two millimeter allen keys right here and this is something new we just did this is our universal installation tool so you can see it looks like a little flag right there kind of gives you a little leverage to do some of this intricate work you could make something like this with your micro tip but basically that's it you got like a micro tip flathead with a notch cut in it there so you can grab some of those springs and you'll see why when we do the feed ramp installation super helpful so that universal installation tool little micro tip flathead screwdriver always love having one of those really handy Needle nose pliers, and as always, guys, make sure we're an iPro. All right, guys, this is also going to double as your unboxing video. So this is straight from Keltec out of the box. So Keltec PMR30, you get a nice little owner's manual here. I like how they do these, you know, lots of good details, a lot of good pictures, kind of explaining some things, how to load the 30-round mag. So this is 22 WMR, 22 mag. Great little exploded view there. Very helpful. You know, some more instructional details with good pictures, which is handy. Really love that about kel -Tec. And then also the warranty. Working with kel -Tec has been fantastic. These guys are installing the M-Carbo parts at the factory, which has been just absolutely amazing. And you know, they're really supportive of us and I love that they are installing the parts and it does not affect the warranty whatsoever. So it's something that it's been a good collaboration so far. Really enjoyed working with them. kel -Tec stickers, you get replacement fiber optic sights. So in case you lose one of these little fiber optic inserts, you've got a spare, really handy. Great little trigger lock there if you're into that. And you get two mags, so two 30 round magazines, which is super helpful. So you can see really nice fiber optic sights here. That's one of the main selling points on the PMR30, along with, of course, the 30 round magazine in 22 Magnum. Love that. You don't see a lot of pistols out there like that. So really a unique find. A lot of people just, you know, when they see them, they snap them up. I mean, I've been in a gun shop where, you know, I was looking at one and the guy literally just talked himself into buying it. I mean, maybe he thought I was going to buy it, but he swiped it before I get a chance to actually get it. So two mags and your PMR 30. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot this bone stock and just see how it performs because everybody wants to know if they don't have one, how does it shoot? Is it something that is reliable? Which is always the first question. And that's what brought us to these two little babies right here. So the PMR 30 Enhanced Magazine Release by M Carbo, it's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna improve the feeding operations by holding the magazine tighter up inside the mag well. So it's gonna actually promote better feeding operations by putting it in the exact place it needs to be for that bolt to grab round after round without inducing any sort of failure to feed malfunctions. And it's also going to help with accidental mag drop. So it's recessed. The button on the PMR30 sticks out a little bit. So you can see how in you know, your hand naturally curves here and you can almost hit it with the bottom of your palm there. It's something that has been a problem, especially for newer shooters that might heal a little bit more than others. Accidental mag drops can certainly happen. So this is something that's gonna correct that which is fantastic and it works great with the stainless steel feed ramp. So this stainless steel feed ramp, 400 series stainless steel CNC machined. I mean, this thing definitely took some time to do and we had a ton of requests for it, you know, over the years and we put it off, put it off because this one's hard. You guys always want us to do the hard projects. So we did it. You know, you can see this is your slide stop spring integrated into the stainless steel feed ramp there. Love this. This is exactly how it is set up from the factory as well. Some improved geometry as well. You'll see the differences when we get into it, but a much more cone shaped type feed ramp to help improve the feeding operation. Also, the angles are a little bit different too. Just promote better feeding operation and it works great with that enhanced mag release. So the enhanced mag release is gonna set it up in the right position and it's gonna help feed the rounds right in the chamber, round after round. This thing shoots night and day different. Drop in performance, literally 
totally different gun. You know, the PMR30 is great, but the amount of failure feed malfunctions right out of the box almost makes it something not quite as fun to shoot. You know, you got to jam these 30 round mags and then you got to spend a couple times clearing malfunctions for every mag. It just doesn't really make it as fun at the range and it makes it a little more time consuming to shoot and load. So nothing better to be able to run a 30 round mag through your PMR30, 22 Magnum, love it. A lot of good power there. Definitely way different than shooting 22 LR. I mean, it sounds pretty aggressive. I mean, it's a lot of fun. The enhanced mag release will work for the PMR30, CP33 and the CMR30. The stainless steel feed ramp, designed for the PMR30, but it'll also work for the CMR30. It would fit the CP33, but you really don't need it for the CP33. The CP33 has an integrated feed ramp into the magazines on the CP33. So if you look at it, your CP33, there is a feed ramp integrated into the magazine itself and it completely bypasses the feed ramp in the CP33. So you could put it in, but it wouldn't do you any good. So might as well save your money and spend it on something else. But stainless steel feed ramp for the PMR30, absolutely 100%, two thumbs up, way to go, get it done. It's gonna be a night and day different performance. And the CMR30 as well, it's gonna same, same sort of function. There's a slight little adjustment you gotta make on the CMR30 on the barrel trunnion. There's two little sharp corners that stick into the area where the rounds would be feeding. It will not hurt the firearm. It's a slight modification. You'll just have to knock those little sharp corners off. So basically, instead of a 90 degree sharp, you're gonna have a little flat there. So you're gonna have, you know, straight edge, 45, and straight edge. Just give you a little clearance just to avoid rounds hitting the sharp corners. So simple little improvement. Let's stop yakking, let's go shoot. All right, so we're gonna jam a couple mags here for the PMR30. We're gonna shoot at bone stock, see how it does. If we get any failure to feed malfunctions with that plastic factory feed ramp and that stock mag release. And then obviously do the install and then we'll do an after install shoot just to see how they compare. Highly recommend. You know, that's the burden of being a PMR30 owner. You get to shoot 30 rounds at a time and it's fun but these little rounds can kind of be a little tedious to load. So handy to have that speed loader. You know, we've got these, really love them. Everybody here uses them now. There's no way to load this mag except with the speed loader, hands down. Start jamming some mags here. Speed loader makes a world of difference. So it works for the PMR30, the CMR30, the CP33, all three of them. All right, that's 30 right there. Load up the next one. All right, 60 rounds later, we are ready to go. All right, so here we go, bone stock. Let's go ahead and put two mags through it, see how she does. First round, first failure to feed. You can see that right there. Almost made it. Second round, stovepipe. does not want to feed whatsoever. So I'm just gonna kind of pitch the round up so that it'll hopefully just fly right in there. There. All right, so ran pretty good after we got through the initial issues there. Another one. Another one. So not bad. It's kind of the early beginnings were the issues. After that, it seemed to run pretty clean. So decent and brand new out of the box. But It'd be fun if we could just run all 30 rounds, no issue, and enjoy our time at the range a little more rather than having to clear three or more malfunctions just to get going. All right, guys, back at the tabletop, letting this baby cool down a little bit. Highly recommend using the speed loader. 30 rounds definitely makes it a lot easier, much more enjoyable to shoot, load, have a great time at the range. No issue, especially you get to the last five rounds, certainly helps. So you can see PMR30, CMR30, CP33. That was fun, except the initial malfunctions we had. Let's go ahead and clear this. You know, anytime we do work together, we make sure we just go through good old safety. All right, we certainly want to drop that mag. And for this demo, we're going to need an empty mag. So this little guy is empty. And check that chamber, bolt face, magazine well. We're good to go. 
All right, so one thing I'm gonna point out right away is how does this mag release help with the feeding operation? Well, you'll see it's right here. See all that play right there? That is a ton of play. You know, you guys, M Carbo Brotherhood, man, you guys are definitely creative because there are a few guys that were on the same track as we were with this. Some guys were modifying their magazines so that it would seat higher. So you see that? That's completely released right there. And you can see there's quite a bit of gap between the feed ramp and the magazine. And you push up on the mag, you can see it. See that lip of the magazine seating much closer to the feed ramp. So the initial issue I was having in the beginning of that first mag, you know, I couldn't even get the round from here, from the mag to start going up the feed ramp because it started coming up and it hitting right here on the actual feed ramp itself. And that's why I had to kind of pitch that round up so it'd kind of jump that little speed bump right there, if you will. Now, if we pushed up on the magazine, it solves that issue. See that? There's no gap. Let go of the mag, there's the gap. You push up on it, closes the gap. So that is a huge improvement right there in and of itself. And that's a major improvement we wanted with the enhanced mag release was to hold it higher. And rather than you having to modify each individual magazine, now you just got an improved magazine release that'll hold it higher. So that's something we're gonna be looking at once we do this swap and exchange. And obviously we're gonna see how this Plastic feed ramp compares to the stainless steel feed ramp once we get it out and switch them over, but definitely wanted to point out that little piece first. We're gonna close up this gap down here right away. I mean, it's about 40, 50 thousandths worth of play, and that play does not help. Definitely not with 22 mag. All right, let's go ahead and open up these parts from M Carbo. So we got the PMR30 enhanced mag release. It'll work with the PMR30, CP33, CMR30. Always helps keep some spare bags for those spare parts. Now this is your injection molded high tensile strength polymer enhanced magazine release with the improved geometry, give you the tighter lockup and the recessed feature here. Also some little texture grip there so you can quickly find it, but I love how you're not gonna accidentally drop it, especially for new shooters. And obviously we're gonna get that higher seat on the mag inside the mag well, which is gonna improve the feeding operations Good little assembly tool here. This is gonna help. I'll show you why it's useful, just in case you're not gonna do a complete teardown. All right, let's go ahead and open up our 400 series stainless steel feed ramp. Love this thing. This was a challenge. So there's your 400 series precision CNC machined feed ramp for the PMR30 and the CMR30. Love this, really love what we did here. So this is your slide stop spring here, integrated into the feed ramp, just like the factory setup. up, tight it in there, so no need to mess with any of that. Beautiful looking 400 series. Now you could polish this up, so all you need is some flitz polish and felt bits with the Dremel like we've done in many other videos. You know, it's not necessary though, we're not gonna polish it in this video, we're still gonna put it in and then do our little after install test to see how it functions compared against the factory plastic ones. So, should be good to go here. So we'll install the mag release first without tearing it all apart. All we need to do is remove the factory mag release, which is right here on this one pin. Gonna need your two millimeter Allen key to get these two screws out. And then we'll push out that pin, get the spring, set it, in the new enhanced mag release with the spring already in there and captured, drop it in, push out that little assembly tool, and then drop in the aluminum pin that came with the grip. So we'll be good to go, it'll be fast, be easy. Quick little side note, if you don't wanna tear it all the way down, you can do it this method, but you know, in this video, we're gonna tear it all the way down and put the feed ramp in. So this is just a quick demo on how to do it in case you don't wanna tear it down all the way. You know, you'll take your two two millimeter Allen keys and we're gonna break these little screws loose here all right, before we do that though, let's just point out, take notice of how that spring is situated in there. So you can see this leg right here, you know, it's coming up on the right side of the mag release when it's upside down like this. So we're gonna replicate that when we go ahead and put it back in. So we're gonna be putting our little assembly tool in there and pre-staging that spring just like that, where that, you know, loop is coming up over the back and that long leg's locking under this piece right up front here. All right, so we're gonna do that. And you can see barely the other leg is pushing against the actual polymer frame on the firearm itself. So right through that cutout right in here. So definitely take notice of that. We're gonna replicate that here in a second. Always good to try to memorize those things real quick. All right, so we got one screw out. We got one screw still in there, so no worries. You know, we can just take our 3 seconds inch punch and we're just gonna put it inside that aluminum pin and just push through down on the table and that's gonna slide that whole pin right out. Give it a little tap on the table like that, and all kind of slides out. We'll pull our pin out, and we'll leave our punch inserted. It's kind of keeping everything contained, mostly. Just kind of shimmy that pin right out. You know, it might be a little snug in there. You can always just take an Allen key and use that to kind of 
spin it the rest of the way out. I'm just going uh, clockwise here, almost like if you were tightening it, because it kind of gives me a good little bite on that pin, and allow it to move out of there. And if you wiggle the mag release a little bit, you know, it should come right out. All right, so there's the bare aluminum pin right there with the screws. Now let's take a good close look as we remove this mag release. We're gonna do a direct swap. So remember how that spring is positioned in there? All right, so we're gonna pull it right out. Just put my finger over it, just hold it in place. Of course not, the spring won't do that for you. All right, so the spring's exactly the same. All right, so we're gonna insert it into the mag release and we wanna make sure we insert it to where it's like this. And this leg is captured on the front here. So we're gonna basically just push it in straight through like this and get that tension and get it to capture inside like that and get that pin through. You know, it'd be helpful if we had a couple pairs of hands here, but we're just gonna push back, kind of use our punch to grab it just like this. You know, the punch is a little bit smaller and then we're gonna use our little assembly tool, which is larger to hold it in place for the install. So now I'm just gonna push that assembly tool through as I'm pushing back on that coil of the spring trying to get it to all line up good most of the way there. Just kind of ease it through, just like that. So now you can see we've got that spring captured just like we want it, and it'll hold it in place nicely, and we'll just drop it right in. Simple little replacement. And that's how it's gonna look on the front there. But we replicated that spring orientation exactly the way it was from the factory, which is good. So now we just drop it right in like this. We want that little button facing out. We want to get this leg that's sticking out right here to press against the palmer here on the frame. That leg's going to just drop right in there, but make sure you just push it back far enough so that you can line up the holes, and then you kind of push down and drag it back so that it's not binding up in there. All right, now we got our mag release prepped. Let's take that pin with the screw on it. Go ahead and get it started because we're going to push right down on the table, you know, and these can be a little snug. So we got it started. It's not interfering yet. You know, we want to be able to drop this mag release right in. So we're going to drop it in like this, a little button facing out, and we're going to make sure we push this leg all the way back down and then drag it back. We don't want to get hung up in there. So, you know, I'm going to make sure I push it all the way in there and then I'm pushing down and back. So I didn't have it far enough. So push down on that mag release, drag it back, and then it kind of lines up perfect like that. And then we'll push down on the table and we'll drive that little assembly tool right out. But you gotta make sure you keep it lined up perfect and that factory pin's a little stiff. If you wanted to put some CLP on that factory pin, you could just to make it slide a little easier because mine is stiff. I'm gonna go ahead and just do that, make life a little better. There we go. Oh man like a dream now. So definitely put a little CLP if you got, you know, a pin that's a little stiff. All right, same concept. We're gonna use our third little hand here as an assist. So now we're gonna put our mag release in, button facing out, obviously. We're gonna push all the way back. You see this long leg here, we wanna get it to clear, we don't want it snag on anything. So we're gonna push all the way in there, drop it down, and then pull it back till it's in alignment with the hole. So all the way in there, pushing down. Now I'm pulling back and it kind of pops right into alignment like that. Now I'm gonna use my punch to push out that assembly tool from the opposite side. Punch is a little smaller, so it'll make it easier than trying to make that pin fit in there right now, because you gotta kind of wiggle it like that, you know, to make sure you get that punch all the way through. Now we can go ahead and step it up to the actual pin itself, and we're gonna push down. I mean, this third set of hands is super helpful for this sort of thing. And so we're pushing this pin in as we are pulling out on the punch, and it helps to Pull back on that mag release a little bit. You know, it's gonna take a second to get that pin started. Give it a couple taps of your hammer so you're not hanging up on any of that polymer. And then a smooth little transition like that. We're most of the way there, just the last little phase. So you just kind of line up your finger and just push through on that pin. Push down the table if you like. Gives you a little more leverage. Make sure it's fully seated, nearly there. And then we can go ahead and Tighten it up with a little two millimeter screw and Allen key here. It'll pull it all together. Flip it over, get both of our Allen keys on these screws and just tighten it right up and that'll close all the gap. Good and snug. Use some Loctite if this is all you're doing, but I'm going a little further than this. This is just a quick little side demo. But you can see, there it is. Mag release is inserted. Awesome. And quick little test. Let's see how much higher it holds it. <laughs> way higher. There still has to be a little bit of play, but it is much higher. And this is obviously the major test here. Let's see how much higher it is inside. So see, we push it all the way up a little bit, but not 
as drastic a movement as before. In conjunction with the feed ramp, it's gonna be a perfect transition, but it already closed up that gap quite a bit. I mean, it's a nice, pretty even transition at this point. I like that. Good little improvement, and then if you were to possibly try to heal, you know, you don't impact that mag release, which is nice. Two in one improvement there, love that. Let's go ahead and do a complete teardown and put in the feed ramp. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the feed ramp. So we're gonna remove this takedown pin. You'll notice one end is flared, which this side is, and the other end is not. So you can just take your 1 8 inch punch and just push right through on that takedown pin, comes out like that. Pretty simple. There's your takedown pin, set it aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and push the slide right off. There's your slide. All right, we're gonna put that to the side for now, and we're gonna focus on the frame here. So you can see there's your plastic feed ramp right there. One thing you'll immediately notice is there's a little tiny tab from the mold there. I don't know why that tab ended up being right there, but definitely, if you end up keeping the plastic feed ramp, I mean, go ahead and knock that little tab off because that does not help. All right, so we're gonna remove all these screws here to separate the pistol grip frame, so just bear with me. You're gonna need your two and a half millimeter for these up here, and then you're gonna need your two millimeter for these little cap screws down here. So where the mag release is and the safety back here, and then it'll be the two and a half for the others. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. So these two screws up front, obviously the same, the little short ones. This screw right here, a little bit longer, right in the middle, just something to take notice of. Another little short one. We'll start keeping our separate piles together there. Another short one. So four short, one long. Five short, one long. And that long one goes right up here in the center, right above the trigger. And it's most likely those nuts will stay in there. So just leave them in, it's not gonna hurt anything. It actually helps keep everything less cluttery here. All right, so put those screws aside. We'll get our two millimeter Allen key and remove the rest of these. Start up here on the safety and just remove these. All right, safety comes off with it. Set that aside and remove this other screw right here. Same two millimeter. You'll notice these two millimeter cap screws are all covered in Loctite, so we'll definitely do that. We'll put the blue 242 on there. The socket head screws we won't have to worry about. They didn't have any Loctite, they come with lock nuts so we'll be fine. But these little button head cap screws, the two millimeters, we're gonna put Loctite on them. All right, so at this point, we got all the screws removed up here, and we've got the two screws removed from this side up here, and the one screw down here on the mag release. Now notice we left these three screws in, which is perfectly fine. I'd recommend doing that. So we're gonna remove it just like this. So the right side of the grip is what we're gonna be pulling off. All right, so we'll go ahead and release the tension on the internals by letting this hammer forward. So you can just have your finger on that hammer like this, and pull the trigger and we'll just let it kind of move forward like that and it'll obviously reduce all the tension internally which makes things a lot easier and a lot more pleasant to deal with as we're pulling this apart. Plastic clamshell, it's gonna require a little bit of maneuvering as we put it back together so don't be surprised. It's certainly something that's part of all of it, just like the sub. The sub was much harder than this so if you can do the sub, you can definitely do this one. All right, so we're gonna start separating the clamshell all right, plastic pistol grip frame. You got your little micro tip. You know, that's handy. You can kind of go through and pry along here, or you can be a little more aggressive with it, but it does help to go slow and kind of pay attention to everything as we're going through it, creating a little space. You see how nice of that kind of separated. So just pushing that micro tip kind of through in various points will help separate everything evenly. All right, we're getting there. All right, good. So it's starting to come apart. You can start to see a little bit more. You know, the trigger bar is on this side here, and you can see how we're gonna need clearance when we put it back in. You can see how it sits right there. And then you can see your trigger return spring in here. You can see your slide stop spring right there on the mag release. And we'll go over this all again. But you know, this is how it's all put together there. Hopefully it stays in one piece. Let's see if we can make that happen. Mostly. All right, so you can see on the right side here, we got the trigger, we got the feed ramp, plastic feed ramp, we got the trigger bar right here, and we got the trigger return spring in there, and this is the pin that the hammer spring will locate on right down here. Moving on over to the other side, you can see this is our slide stop. It kind of just popped out, but it'll just rest right back in like that. All right, you can see our hammer spring here. You can see our mag release down here. So you can see our hammer right here, and you can see how it locks and engages with the sear. See that, the sear trip back right here? So we can unlock it by pushing that sear forward. This is what the trigger bar does. 
So we're gonna push it forward and it unlocks that hammer just like that. All right, good. So we're not gonna get into this. Just leave it all alone, it's fine. You know, we're gonna do a quick little exchange there on the feed ramp, but you know, I always like to show you a couple little extras there. All right, so here's the feed ramp. We're gonna replace that. Good little side-by-side -side view for you right here. <laughs> this thing's awesome. All right, so this will be a quick little exchange and we're gonna replicate how everything was and just put it back together. All right, so this is how everything came apart for me. I'm gonna tear it down a little bit further just so in case you had a little disassembly explosion there, you know, you know how to put everything back together. So make it quick and simple. You know, this is the left-hand side of the grip. You know, I just got the slide stop right here and you can see that unique little curve feature and how it located down in here, right there. And it's got a little hole in it, which is for that spring on the feed ramp to locate into. That's what gives it the tension. So we can set this left side just over here to the side for now. We can pull out this mag release as well, just to give you a quick little idea, you know, how it all would go together. I'm just gonna use that little assembly tool that came with the kit, just so I don't have to reset everything completely. We already kind of demoed that anyway. So I'm just compressing it and I'm just sliding it right through. So there's how the mag release will go in. Remember how we had that spring on the right hand side when it's flipped upside down like this. So that's always a good little check right there. All right, good. So we can set the mag release aside for now. And this left-hand side grip is pretty much stripped down. You know, we'll review all these parts. I'll lay them out and we'll go through them. All right, so this right-hand side, you know, it was unusual that the uh, feed ramp ended up on the right-hand side, just because that spring usually locates right here inside the slide stop. So it was kind of bizarre, but exactly why we're going through it. All right, now we'll remove the trigger and the trigger bar here. You can see how that trigger return spring is captured underneath the trigger bar. There's a little leg that loops under, so that's certainly important. And we'll pull it apart here and review that. And definitely could use an improved trigger here. Let me know if that's something you guys want. And the way this goes together, you can see this pin goes through the top. That little loop on that spring goes under the trigger bar like that. And then this straight leg will wind around and grabs that little feature on the side of the trigger and when it's all compressed together, you know, it stays nice and tight like that. So you get that little leg of the trigger return spring that loops under the trigger bar, and you get that little straight leg, which captures on that short little face right there. I mean, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when you compress it all in tight, it holds it in together. And you can see that's the linkage right there. So we'll just lay that down and we'll review all of this. And then your hammer spring pin, you know, this is where the hammer spring hooks and locates right here on this pin. And obviously we got two major pins, your trigger hinge pin up here and your hammer spring pin down here. So these two pins obviously are gonna to locate in the opposite side there. It's a little methodical process. Let's review all these pieces and then put it back together. All right, these are all the internal pieces, not a whole lot, definitely not compared to the sub. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, you got your slide stop bar right here. You got your little slide stop that locates on this tab on this bar. And then we got our new and improved mag release that we're throwing back in. We've got our mag release spring already in there. And then we've got the little assembly tool holding it in place, you know, the proper location, which is important. And we've got our two feed ramps down here. So you can see the plastic one and the stainless steel feed ramp. And this is your slide stop spring right here. So it's all captured inside the feed ramp on the backside. We're looking at the backside view of it. We've got our trigger right here, the plastic one. Definitely could use an improvement. Definitely can use an improvement slide stop as well. You know, this thing will blow off while you're shooting. Now, on the brand new one, this is pretty stiff to just pull off. So you don't need to pull it off, but the more you remove it, that polymer wears, and eventually you'll just be shooting and it'll fly right off. Trigger return spring, trigger return spring pin, and then your trigger bar right here. All right, so that's down and dirty in a nutshell all we have to do. So now we can just throw it back in the firearm, we're good to go. All right, so let's put the right side of the grip back together. You just need your trigger, trigger return spring, trigger return spring pin, and then your trigger bar. And you'll notice on the factory trigger, you know, you've got this feature right here on the right hand side. That's where that little straight leg of the trigger return spring is gonna rest and locate. And that's where we're gonna be putting everything. So on the right hand side of the trigger, so it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna need that pin. We're gonna need that trigger return spring. And we're also gonna need that trigger bar, so we'll just throw it together. Just take your trigger bar like this, throw that pin right through like this, and then we're gonna put our trigger return spring on there. So that little weird bend is gonna go on first because it's gonna hook under the trigger bar just like that. 
so it hooks under hold it all together all we're left with is that straight leg there and remember we're going to put this whole trigger bar assembly on the right hand side of the trigger and it's going through the top hole and then we just wind it around and get that straight leg to capture that little tiny feature on the right hand side and it'll hold it all together you got to kind of pinch it together like this, compress it, and then we're gonna slide it right on that silver pin right there. So that silver pin's going through the bottom hole on the trigger. It can be a little snug, initially getting it on. And slide it all the way back, and we should be good to go. Once we just drop it into that little channel right there, it'll hold itself nice and contained, just like that. Now, we put the grips back on together. We're gonna have to push this trigger bar down so we can get clearance right there for the safety. But that's it, straightforward, nothing to it. So that's the right hand side. All right, now we just need to do the left hand side of the frame. So it'll be pretty straightforward. Now obviously we need to go ahead and make sure we've got the pin from the other grip. I had left it over there. So just make sure you have that pin for your hammer spring to locate on. You know, it could be on your right hand side grip, but it needs to be on the left hand side so that we can get it to locate right here. So we'll pull down on the hammer spring and get it to locate right in that little pin right there. We're also going to put in our new and improved enhanced mag release and the stainless steel feed ramp. We don't need the plastic one. We can put it aside. Put in a bag of parts. It's always good to have spares. And then our slide stop right here. You know, we're going to take our little slide stop button here. Put it right on, just like that. So you can see how it snaps right on there. All right, pretty straightforward. So everything's kind of pre-staged at this point. We'll go ahead and we'll get started with getting the hammer spring back on the pin first, just so, you know, if we have a little trouble here, it's not gonna disrupt the linkage because it's all alignment based. All right, now let's go ahead and set the tension right here on this hammer spring. So just take your needle nose pliers and just grab the little bottom portion of that loop right there. And we're gonna pull down until we can get it on this little tiny pin right here. Not this pin, that'll screw up the hammer spring. This little tiny pin right down there. It'll be under a good amount of tension so you can brace on that, you know, big pin there your thumb and then pull back with those needle nose pliers and then you'll get it it's under a good amount of tension so that'll be it right there all right so that step is done pretty simple and straightforward now we're going to be putting in our slide stop and our enhanced mag release and our stainless steel feed ramp so let's go ahead and put in our enhanced mag release first all right just make sure we've got that leg of the spring on the right hand side when we're looking at it from the back view here and obviously this leg up here we have to get to cooperate once we get the grips going back together, but nothing to worry about just yet. So we're gonna have the thumb recess portion facing out. So we're gonna push straight down onto that pin. Compressing that spring a little bit will help kind of maneuver everything in place. And we're gonna push straight through and there we go. So we got our mag release inserted and put that little assembly tool somewhere. Might come in handy later, you never know. Now when we put the grip back together, we're gonna have to push that little leg of the spring all the way in as we compress the grip. No big deal. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and insert our slide stop. We want the button facing out, all right? And this little C is gonna locate right down in here on that little feature right there. You can see that. We'll get it here better in a second. So get that little button to locate first. You can see how it drops right in like that. Just right in there. And then we're gonna follow that little slide stop bar down here and just make sure it seats completely around that little raised portion of the polymer. That's where the trigger hinge pin is gonna locate right there. We're gonna make sure when we get the feed ramp in, we get that little leg of the spring to locate in that little tiny hole there on this slide stop bar. Cause that spring on the feed ramp is what gives tension to our slide stop here when we move it up and down. So take our brand new CNC machine 400 series stainless steel feed ramp and you'll notice how you've got these little pegs right here. All right, and this is what locates into the actual frame right here. You'll see these little cutouts, these square little peg cutouts on both sides of the frame. So we'll insert it just like this, press it right in. Nice, clean, pressed right in. All right, locates really well. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna make sure we wind this spring around and get it to locate in that little tiny hole. You can still barely see it down there. This is where we're gonna use our universal installation tool. This is something that we sell separately. You know, it can be used for a wide variety of projects. You know, we created it because it's just one of these handy little tools. It's like, man, I need something with a little pick right there to grab this spring so I can maneuver it. So it comes in handy for this job right here. All right, so I take the little pick end of my universal installation tool, grab that leg of the spring, and I'm gonna be winding it back towards that slide stop bar. And I'm gonna get it into position, 
push up as far as I can to get that spring to locate right into that bar. So it'll be a bit of a snug fit there. And it's gonna snap right in place just like that. So it's gonna be a good snug tight fit and then we're gonna check our tension. I mean, be careful, you don't wanna pop it out of place, but I mean, it's under tension. You know, everything's nice and seated there, so we're good to go. So we've got our spring connected to the trigger bar, went right through that little hole right there, and it's all locked and located, perfect alignment, so that's good. That's right where we wanna be right now. Now we just gotta take the other side of the grip and compress it together. So we've got two grips here, you know, we've got two major pins that gotta locate. So the one down here with the hammer spring and the one over here where the trigger is, and then this other tab on the actual stainless steel feed ramp that's gotta locate right over here. So you can see that other little female pocket there. So we're gonna merge them all together. And don't forget, obviously, too, we've got this you know, big pin down here for the mag release. So a few items that gotta locate, all right? We'll just take a little step at a time kind of just lay it loose on there. I'm gonna focus on the mag release pin first. Just try to get it started a little bit. And then I'm up here and I'm trying to basically methodically go through it, you know, trying to see where I can feel any sort of hesitation between the polymer. You know, I'm working back here, trying to get it at least started. Don't forget, we've got to get this trigger bar down so that we can get obviously that safety to push all the way through. So I'm moving the trigger bar, trying to kind of massage it all together, which so far, so good. You know, it'll, if you're lucky, it'll kind of just piece together just like this, which is a beautiful thing. You know, mates up perfectly. And that's it. Now back here, I'm gonna take my little micro tip and I'm gonna push this little spring back in. That's the mag release spring. So we just wanna push it in into the right side there. And it'll kind of just jump over and hang out right there. All right, good. You know, most importantly, getting the polymer all kind of snapped back together and now we can start bolting it up, which is awesome. So hopefully it went together like a glove, just like that for you. Take your time and be patient with it. Uh, this pin down here, you just stick your punch in and just maneuver it so you can center it up and push straight down on it. And that's that. So these little two millimeter screws, the ones that look like this, that got some Loctite adhesive residue on there, we're gonna put some blue 242 on them. Uh, the other ones we're not gonna worry about. So let's go ahead and get these done with some blue 242. Be these three right here. All right, so I got our two millimeter little button head cap screws here. Gonna take some blue 242, just, you know, good little amount on there. You can clean off the old Loctite if you want. You know, it's not gonna hurt anything if you don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw it right in. Get it started down here on this mag release pin, because we all know it likes to spin. We'll have to tighten it up there towards the end, but you just wanna get those threads started. Now removing that old Loctite off of there will make it easier to get the thread started. So that is definitely one benefit there. All right, so we got the safety lever here. Put a little dab Loctite on there and we're gonna drop it right into place and make sure you get that lever to locate properly, kind of let that thing seat in there. And you can always flip it over the other side to see where you're supposed to be, whether you're on safe or fire. Kind of getting it started. Let's just double check. So we're on fire, we're good. <laughs> Makes it a little easier than having to guess. All right, last one here. A little dab of Loctite and tighten it right up. If you've got any excess, just wipe it off before it dries. You know, no big deal. Snug them right up. Any excess, just wipe it off. You need some water too. Won't hurt anything. You got it. I was always a kid in school that liked to use too much glue, so, you know, I definitely go a little overboard in the Loctite. I'm just snugging them up, making sure they're good to go. I'm gonna get this one down here, especially this mag release. Get my other two millimeter Allen key and we'll turn both at the same time and tighten it right up here. All right, good and snug. And now we'll go ahead and we'll get the rest of the screws in place. Let's start off with the longest one first. All right, we're gonna run that right over top of the trigger. Remember that was the one that was the longest. Take our two and a half millimeter Allen key. We're gonna tighten it right up. Grab your one eighth inch punch and just use that to push on that lock nut. Gives you a little something to brace against as you're tightening these up. Make sure you catch those threads. And then it'll kind of, you know, these lock nuts will just lock right in that little cutout. You can see how 
the hex cut out, they fit perfectly in there. All right, now we're just gonna finish the job. You should have five of these little shorties. Throw them right in, tighten them right up. On the downhill stretch now. All right, I'm just kind of bracing the other side like this. You know, sometimes it, it helps just to press down towards the table. Two and a half millimeter Allen key. Just tighten up these shorties. All right, last one down here, bottom of the grip. All right, good to go. Just make sure they're all nice and snug now. Make sure you didn't miss any. All right, there we go. Our brand new stainless steel feed ramp in there. Just bling and looking beautiful. We are nearly there. All we have to do now before we put the slide on is just lock that hammer back. You know, so use something non-abrasive. If you don't have anything, you can just use your punch, you know, roll it up in a towel and just kind of push back on that hammer and it'll lock back. Give you a try or two there. There you go. So it locks right back. All right, now we're gonna slide the slide onto the frame. Just kind of inch it back. And we wanna make sure we line up that lug there on the barrel so you can see right through, clean, just like that. Take your takedown pin, push it right through. All right, we're good to go. So we'll do a quick little function check. So go ahead, if you've got a snap cap, use a snap cap. You can see this is a round that was shot already, so a spent casing. You can see the little primer indent. So this will work too. It just on the rim fires, it helps protect your firing pin. You don't want that firing pin striking that steel chamber. So we just kind of drop it right down in there. Snap caps work so much better than this, but you know, this does work. All right, for all intensive purposes. And the reason I'm showing you this little function check is because, well, on the PMR 30, you know, so put on safe, pull the trigger, nothing good. Pull the trigger, perfect. All right, so on the PMR 30, you can over tighten this screw in particular, and these two back here, and then you'll have a dead trigger. So we know that through experience, putting these back together and ripping them apart all the time. You know, if you over tighten any of these screws too much, you have a dead trigger. So troubleshoot that way, you know, if you have a dead trigger right off the bat. But other than that, we are good to go. So we can go ahead and see how this new feed ramp does in conjunction with the enhanced magazine release. So really excited to see how both of them perform together. We designed them to work together. We almost just need to make it a package bundle because these two parts in combination do a wonderful job eliminating those failure to feed malfunctions and just a lot of the annoying cycling issues that seem to be something that plagues the PMR 30 quite a bit. So 30 round magazine, let's run 30 rounds. Let's do some 30 round mag dumps, no malfunctions. Let's go test this baby out and see how she does. All right, so just to up the ante a little bit, we've got our stainless steel feed ramp installed. We've got our improved magazine release installed. So should raise the height of the mag to help the feeding operations and the stainless steel feed ramp improve geometry and it's stainless steel. So it's not gonna wear, it's gonna hold tight tolerances compared to the plastic factory feed ramp. Factory versus stainless steel. We're gonna up the ante a little bit. So we're gonna shoot Fiocchi flat nose. Don't recommend shooting that whatsoever in these pistols just doesn't feed very well. Little flat nose babies right there. So ideally just stick to something with a round tip or a sharp pointed tip, but not a flat nose. So stay away from the flat nose if you can avoid it. All right, just lost one. It's all right, we got a hundred here. Flat nose we're gonna avoid, but you know, anything with a round tip, you know, um, soft tip, you'll be fine. Full metal jacket, hollow points, you'll be fine. So this is just to up the ante a little bit. So we're gonna make it a little fun. So we'll see how we do, see how we perform. Plastic versus stainless. So let's jam these babies up. The speed loader definitely works wonders. I mean, I would highly recommend this. It'll allow you to jam your mags much faster, much more efficiently especially those last five rounds can really be a doozy there. So certainly helps. Oh yeah. Getting there. All right, babies are jammed full, ready to rock. Let's see how the flat nose does. Here we go.
Doesn't get any better than that. Love it! It'll shoot flat nose no problem all day long. Absolutely amazing. Really thankful we did this. So glad you guys pushed us to make it happen. I mean, this is a painful project. Definitely took us some time. I know you guys were requesting this about a year ago, but it's finally here. Really looking forward to what you guys think about it. I can't wait to hear the feedback. You know, we love this, man. Working with you guys on fun projects that can be challenging. And, you know, all the feedback, all the prototype testing, all the R&D that goes into this. It's awesome, man. Really appreciate you guys and all your support. You know, thank you, M. Carver Brotherhood. You guys have been great all along the way. You know, this was a challenging project here. I mean, the optic mount was for sure a challenge. This one was a little bit of a doozy as well. So eager to hear what everybody thinks about it. Can't wait to see the comparisons. You guys keep us posted, man. We're, we're looking forward to it. Gets us excited. So thank you. Really appreciate the support. M. Carver Brotherhood, thank you most of all. And as always, happy shooting.